Welcome to Women to Women by Avino, a conversational platform to help drive the importance of body care, self-care and wellness for women in our modern society. Through this, we hope to encourage women to take time to recharge and re-energize so that we can be refreshed for those around us. I'm Cheryl, founder of Body Image Movement Rock the Naked Truth and I've had my fair share of struggles with weight and self-image. I'm also guilty of neglecting self-care. I have with me today Kelly Latimer, sport and lifestyle presenter, fitness enthusiast and mother to Sienna, as well as Aura One from Medical Affairs of Johnson's & Johnson's. Today, we will be chatting about the struggles that women face, how we can take better care of ourselves and Aura One will also share her expert advice on body care and skin care that's backed by science. So, ladies, let's dive right into it, shall we? Um, let's talk about body image. So body image, I define it as how you perceive yourself, not what your mom thinks of you, not what society thinks of you, not what your partner thinks of you. So Kelly, what does body image mean to you? Body image to me is more about appreciating what your body can do. Like we are incredible human beings, right? Our bodies can do so much for us. And I think you're right. It's not about what your mum thinks or sometimes it's very easy for us to get swept up in what social media thinks we should look like. I think a lot of us take our guidelines from what we see online. And it really shouldn't be that way because we ought to just take a step back and appreciate what our bodies can actually do for us at this point in time and at every single point in time as well. And be satisfied with that whilst making sure that we're doing the best and the most that we can to keep it in tip-top shape. You see, the thing about body image is, I think people have a certain perceived notion of what it should be, especially with social media and all that, right? So women especially, we tend to be more prone to dieting, starving ourselves, going crazy on exercise. So, I mean, you have had two periods in your life where you struggled with weight. One when you returned from Australia, from your studies, and another time when you at Siena. Yeah. So, like, tell us more about what you went through and, and how it was for you then. I think when I was younger and I went to Australia, I went to go and study and then came back. I mean, whilst I was in Australia, it was fine because everyone's <laughs> slightly larger, bigger boned, you know, the Caucasian genes and everything. Um, but being someone who's of mixed heritage, I kind of didn't fit here or there. And it was only when I came back to Singapore that I realized, oh, actually, I'm a lot larger than I used to be. <laughs> so it was, it was a period of adaptation for me. But then I think because I was younger, I was also a lot more susceptible mm. to the pressures of society saying that I should be smaller and that I should fit into a size S. Even though I was a size S in Australia, when I came back, I was a size L here. Wow. So that was that was tough for me. And mm. then I think the easiest thing to do is then go and say, okay, try the fad diets, try, try extreme exercise. Mm. And all that led to for me was just injury and also wrecking my body, like hormonal changes and all sorts. Uh, fast forward a few years later, or quite a few years actually, um, <laughs> have a kid, I'm much more settled. I'm like almost a decade older. And yes, I'm larger than I was, mm -hmm. but I actually found myself, yes, under pressure to lose weight and get back to my pre-baby weight, which mm -hmm. everyone thinks is completely normal and that everyone should do and that everyone should just like snap back like that, which isn't the case for everybody. Yep. Um, and it certainly wasn't the case for me. It took me a good year and a half, two years to properly get back into the groove of things and be comfortable with mm. my body again. But it wasn't so much that I hated my body when it was a little bit fluffier or when it was soft. I mean, like, you think about it, right? If you expand a balloon to like 20 times its regular size and then you deflate it, it doesn't go back to exactly how it was before. It'll be a little It'll bit stretched, stretched right? You know? Yeah. It's gonna be stretched, it's gonna be soft, and whilst your body feels a little bit foreign, it then takes a little period of adaptation to say, okay, no, this is my body, it's okay. I've, I've raised a human, mm -hmm. it's still alive, that's good. Um, <laughs> but then also just taking the time to appreciate that, yeah, it's okay, and I can take time to mm. then look after myself and get back to the way I want to be, mm. but, the healthy way, not the way 10 years before that I'd done it yep. with extreme diets. It's okay, how do you have the right nutrition? How do you make sure you're getting enough rest? How do you make sure that you're taking care of your skin mm. and your body to make sure it's in the best shape possible to look after your child as well? But being in the media industry, is there more pressure on you? Uh, there was definite backlash. There was one client who'd said to me like, hey, six months ago, yeah, Oh, wow. yeah. Six months? Six months. Hello. Yeah. yeah, it's been six months since you had a baby. Yeah? Like, if you want to do work on TV, then you better make sure that you're getting back to where you were. And I was just like, are you hiring me for my capabilities as a host and a presenter? Or are you hiring me because 
I look skinny. Like you right. choose your priorities. Like if you want a model, then by all means, go yeah. ahead. That's and I think <laughs> it took the maturity of me at this stage in life to be mm. able to say, you know what? I don't need that. I yep. don't need your negativity, and I don't need you trying to force your ideals on me. Mm. Um, and and I just took my time to make sure that I did what I knew I needed to do to get back where I wanted to be. If I spoke to my younger self, then I would have slap my younger self and said no, <laughs> that'd be silly don't listen to them it's okay just take your time and do what you need to do yeah. look after yourself and when i start working in um in the uk where you know everybody like kelly say have um you know a bit bigger size mm. compared to asian women so many of my colleagues will say oh why you're so slim and skinny you should eat more and put more weight so in that time right also it really didn't affect me because mm -hmm. I kind of maybe you know um, I'm not that young so I'm kind of yeah it really doesn't matter like what size you are mm. as long as you're healthy I think that's the most important mm. but that's the thing I don't understand right like regardless of how you look or whatever size you are why it's not it's not okay to comment on people's appearances right I mean I think it's very common when people haven't seen you for a long time and you're like eh you gain weight or eh you lost weight like why does the first comment has to be about your appearance. Do you get that all the time? I think it's also, it's, it's quite difficult, right? It's also culture. Like in Thailand, like we always say this, oh, you're, you're getting a bit wet, you know? Your skin is not good. When, I think when you were young, you probably be more, you know, cautious mm. on how you look. But when you're at certain age, you probably would say that, you know, oh, okay, you know, this is how your body is. You just accept as it is. You cannot change your mm. body, and but you can change how you think about other people comments on you. But I think it's also exactly. down to language and the translation mm. of languages because when I was younger and growing up in Singapore, like I'd moved over from the UK, and the first thing any Chinese auntie will say is that, wow, you're very big. And it means, well, you're very big. Mm. But like, I was also quite tall. So mm. it could have been tall, it could have been broad shouldered, it could have been overweight, but there was no definition of what it was. So True. me at 12 years old just got really offended because I thought everyone was calling me fat. But like, I look back <laughs> and I'm like, actually, I was fine. <laughs> So it, yeah. it also, it's also what gets lost and what gets lost in translation. Yeah, they probably thought like, you know, the last they saw you was still a kid, kid and now you're like bigger. So you've grown up. Yeah. <laughs> But what she said is very true about how you cannot control what others want to say about you, but you can control how you react to what they say. So the primary reason why a lot of people start jumping onto this, I need to die and everything, because they get so affected by one simple comment. Like you just need someone to go, oh, your thighs look fat and that's it. You know, the girls just go dieting and start doing drastic things to themselves. The other question I have for you ladies is both of you are mothers to beautiful daughters. I just want to ask, like, being a mum, does that make you feel like you want to be a role model to them? And does that help with your body image? Um, or one you want to go for? Yeah, definitely. I think um, I will try to, you know, tell my daughter that, you know, we are in a diverse society. Mm. It's not like one size fits all or one look fits all. Mm. It, we are different. And, you know, the most important thing that um, we need to look after our body, our mind, try to build her, you know, uh, mental strength. Mm. And also uh, for myself, right, I start to do exercise because I want to be fit and healthy to stay with my daughter as long as, you know, I can. Mm. So I keep my body healthy and also kind of drag her a bit <laughs> to go for exercise because, you know, it's not easy to try to tell, oh yeah, let's go. So I kind of bribe, drag, <laughs> anything that I can do, I would do. I mean, kids are nothing if not a reflection of their parents. Mm. So if I set the example to Sienna, who is three and a half, that she should exercise, that she should want to be strong, that she should want to be active and do push-ups and jumping jacks and all these sorts of things and want to run an obstacle course, like if I want her to be like that, I have to set that example. Yeah. And it's ingrained in her now. Like if you ask her who's the strongest person in the household, she says mommy. Oh, <laughs> I think it's uh, yeah. It's, uh, you have to set example for your own kids. Yeah. So that brings me to another question. I mean, both of you have full-fledged careers. You're busy with work. How do you deal with mum guilt? 
Mum guilt is a very real thing. Uh, like, I started working when Sienna was a month old. So, wow. physically leaving her or needing to go and travel meant that like, I had to deal with that burden. But that mm. was my personal choice because that meant that I was taking care of me because I enjoy my work. I really like what I do. Um, taking time out to exercise. I mean, every school holiday I will always gain weight because I cannot <laughs> justify spending an hour or two hours in the gym away from my daughter when she's just sat at home. So mm. to me, it's self-care in a different way because mm. I'm taking care of that mum guilt by eliminating that mum guilt whenever mm. I can. But also at the same time, like if I do need to take time out for myself, like I just know that, again, that mm. all comes under that self-care thing. And if I'm a better, if I feel better about myself, then I'm going to be a better mother anyway. Yeah, I think we all have as a mother the mom's guilt. And I think this would eventually getting better once your kid you know grows up at certain age for me when she was now my daughter is eight years old but mm. when she was young I also have my you know mom's skills I think what helped me is that um, we have like a set of you know mom's friend that we can mm -hmm. share our you know worries our just rent out anything and then you know we can just let each other know that you're not the only one everybody mm. faces the same thing you just have to deal with it so you just have to kind of prioritize your work and try to, um, you know, make it balance. And the most important thing just to forgive yourself. Don't be too harsh on yourself. And look after yourself, whether you want to look after your body, your mind, your skin. Because if you look after yourself, you can then look after others. I feel that there's a lot that we can do to take care of ourselves, to help us feel better about the skin that we're in, whether it's taking care of your skin, whether it's going out there and getting exercise, whether it's just making sure that you spend some time for yourself, I feel that is really important. Whatever that may be, it could be a facial, or just applying moisturizer, whatever it is. Body image, I mean, it's a very personal thing, but at the same time, I feel it affects a lot of people around us because when we don't feel confident, when we feel insecure, we tend to, it spills off to other aspects of our lives. So I just hope that, you know, from this conversation we've had here, like people can realise that the body is your responsibility. It's something that fortunately or unfortunately is stuck with you for the rest of your life. So why don't we just take this time to take care of it in whichever way we want to and take care of ourselves so we can take better care of others. Thank you so much Kelly and Orawan for your time and for sharing. Thank, Thank you, you for watching Women to Women, Women by Avino. We hope you found the conversation insightful and valuable. To encourage you ladies to make a conscious effort on self-care, Avino is giving one lucky winner a pampering staycation at the Warehouse Hotel worth over $800. Or you can stand a chance to win an Avino care pack. All you have to do is like Avino SG on Instagram and Avino on Facebook Post a photo telling us how you practice self-care. It can be in the form of a personal story, a tip, or a motivational message. And don't forget to hashtag women to women sg and Avino sg For more details, check out the caption. Remember, it is perfectly okay to take time out to re-energize, recharge, and refresh so you can take better care of those around you. <laughs>